Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Omnia Performance Podcast with myself, Fergus Crawley, with Jonathan Payne, or Big Johnny Payne, as we've said in a few podcast episodes previously, and Dr. Phil, or Big Dr. Phil, as he shall henceforth be known. And as you shall henceforth be known, is as the lovely person that took their thumb on a little stroll up to the follow or subscribe button and rated and or reviewed the show on whatever whatever, whatever podcast platform they are listening on. And you can share it with a friend too, if you would be so kind. As today, we're going to discuss something potentially inflammatory, depending on how much of a rabbit hole we go down and what angles we all take. And that is the concept of, quote unquote, a hybrid athlete online, on social media, on the line, as Vince Vaughn would say in the interns. The intern? On the line. Oh no. Johnny, have you seen it? I had to unmute myself there, excitedly trying to unmute myself. So yes, I have seen it, and I think that is a very cool lovely. Fantastic, thank you. Okay, and and just to, just to flag like we did in the last episode, Johnny is in a soundproof box in the office that he has since discovered has a loud fan that can't be turned off in it. So there is that background noise from him, and that's because we're not in the studio because we are doing this virtually today. So if there is a bit of a noise in the background, we do firmly apologise. But we do just want to highlight that it is an anomaly and it won't happen again. Thank you very much. Anyway, let's kick things off. And I'm going to kick them off by saying nothing, apparently. I am going to say nothing. <laughs> Long pause. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm just trying to think how, 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 to, how to frame this. Because essentially, I know that we'll all have opinions on this, but... We haven't actually discussed nor planned exactly what direction we want this to go into. So this could become the Wild West. So I'm actually going to hand over to Phil because this was your suggestion as a podcast topic. So why don't you keep basically passing on the baton. Hot potato, Phil. On you go. On you go. Please uh, cover this hot potato in butter and then I will smother it in cheese for you. Well, that was in a strange time. <laughs> it was weird, wasn't it? I don't know why I did that. I'm sorry, everyone. Everyone listening and to Johnny and Phil, I do apologize, but I'm clearly hungry for a... Baked potato. So, Phil, please uh, bake me one. Of course. Well, it, my question around this all stemmed from like taking a bit of a back seat from actually posting from uh, Instagram or any social media while I was sort of like, you know, enjoying the birth of my son. And now I've got a kid here. I see social media in a completely different light. I'm sorry if this is really going down a, a dark route because, um, you know, originally we we're talking about hybrid athletes, but it did make me think just, you know, social media is a place where unfortunately isn't just someone's, you know, photo album and a group of friends. It's a, a lot of people using it for business and trying to get attention. And how has the hybrid training space been utilized in that sense as to, for example, we talk a lot about the interference effect and, you know, it really isn't that well understood. Um, but do we see that we still have the problem of people thinking, oh, why are you combining strength and endurance? There's an interference effect. Don't do that. It's not possible. Or are we in a space where coaches are still pretending that people have that view but they need people to have some negative view because they need to show that they're myth busting. They're showing their intelligence on a particular topic because they want people's attention to come to them to, uh, I don't know, what it, whatever it might be. Followers, they might be selling something, whatever it might be. So are they just creating arguments or topics which are, are actually understood but they need people to assume that it's not well understood so they can provide the answer for it? Uh, and that leads to people to really steer people in directions as to, or, or it creates confusion or misinformation. Interesting. That's not the angle I was going to go with. So there's a few uh, souls I will not take on this podcast. But <laughs> I fully understand what you mean. However, I will counter with the echo chamber effect that comes from you experiencing and your social media feed being curated based on the people you interact with and the people that you follow. And I think for the most part, Phil, you will probably follow people that are significantly more scientifically adept and up to speed than I might, Johnny might, than Susan that works at Deloitte and Accounting might. And that means that you might have a higher perception of the threshold of understanding and or intelligence that goes with the balancing of these disciplines. Because 
speaking from experience with the athletes that we onboard and the conversations we have every day with with Omnia, Johnny and I have often had this discussion with nutrition specifically where we found ourselves kind of not getting frustrated, but kind of being like, how can somebody not know this? Because we're 15, 20 years deep into understanding performance nutrition as much as we need to, to then not really have to think about it again. But there are people that haven't had that education and are just at a different point in their journeys. And that's not a bad thing, but it means that we need to be sensitive to the fact that we we are the privileged ones for knowing the outcome and knowing reality. So I think the same goes for this because hybrid training is a phrase that it, it is a marketing phrase. I want to be clear that we use it because it's the easiest way for people to understand what it is that we do. I use it in YouTube titles and YouTube thumbnails because on the internet at the moment, it is the easiest way to communicate how I would categorize myself for people to feel, oh, I categorize myself this way too, therefore I will click on this. And that is why it's a prominent term it has become a little bit bastardized which i think we'll move on to as a collective later on in the podcast but i think in relative in, in reference to what you've said phil i think I, i'm continually surprised at the lack of understanding from either end of the spectrum with the other and the amount of myths that still exist even though a lot of the age-old ones have kind of been done away with, but only in those that are, that are our sort of in our direct echo chambers, therefore creating the illusion that that is how it is for the majority. When in reality, that's likely not the case because we still have people come to us every day that say, I've been taking 531 and CrossFit Metcon six days a week and trying to do an Ironman plan on top of it. Why hasn't this worked? And we go, ah, well, obviously it hasn't worked. Yeah, <laughs> but oh, I thought doing more was better, and this, that, and the other, and oh well, actually, I've been I've been doing my running first thing in the morning because it's only utilizing fat, which will make me more efficient for this. And you're like, well, that's not actually how that manifests itself. Or I mean, there are myths to be busted, but essentially, there is still an illusion of catabolism with cardio endurance, and I think the big thing is is the polarized. <sighs> visions illusions perhaps that go with the categories of sports or disciplines that people place themselves in because when you think bodybuilder you think of someone everybody listening now will be picturing could be ronnie coleman could be jeff side could be whoever it is i immediately went for phil heath in my head i hear the word bodybuilder i see phil heath nobody do anything weird with that as a uh you could probably edit that into an interesting short if you'd like, but <laughs> essentially I see Phil Heath in the shower. Uh, no, it's uh, in my dreams. But no, essentially we have associations, don't we, with humans, with certain words. And you think, runner. My head immediately went to Paula Radcliffe, interestingly. Oh, this is a fun game. Uh, <laughs> sprinter, Usain Bolt. I think triathlete, I go Jan Fredino. Jan Fredino is tall, lanky, long. Long leverages, fantastic for triathlon. Usain Bolt isn't an anomaly, but is a world-class sprinter, obviously. Paula Radcliffe is built like a racing snake because she is a racing snake. And then Phil Heath is built like Achilles if Achilles has found a lab in ancient Greece. And that's because he is a world-class champion bodybuilder. But those are the far ends of the spectrum. And if people lack an understanding of what goes into the top end of the spectrum, then they struggle to see the sort of middle ground between them and where they could fit in within that. So I think it's, it's especially within the, the space of, of hybrid or concurrent training, a regular gym goer will have a sense, certain sense of ignorance about endurance training, which might give them false perceptions about what endurance training entails or what the training might look like, rather than open themselves up to the fact that there's ways that you can make them work, which is where the almost quote-unquote myth-busting element comes in. And we constantly, we, we feel like we've done a lot of myth-busting online and it always feels a bit trite and I find it a bit awkward whenever I type. And that proves that strength and endurance can coexist on a post. I'm, I've done this already. I've said this so many times, but there's still new people that are learning that. And that's great. And that means there's more people that we can interact with and engage and, and sort of activate within our sort of sphere. But... It's, it's easy to forget that not everybody has the understanding of things that you do. And that's not, that's not me, I'm, I'm sure you're, it's not me criticizing you, Phil, for think of everybody else, you fool, but more a case of, in, on social media especially, given that's how the topic is going today, 
it's easy to forget that the algorithm that we are fed is different to the person next to us. And I've heard people say, oh, have you seen this all over TikTok? Because that's what they're seeing all over TikTok. I actually saw a reel the other day that I think was satire, but it was like, oh, my buddy had no idea how the TikTok algorithm worked. He's like, oh, yeah, TikTok's stupid. It's just naked black dudes. And then all of their faces were like, excuse me, because essentially TikTok will show you what you like watching. So it was a case of him not understanding that actually it was feeding him the things that he was interacting and watching the most, which is the same as the next person. So if they're into Lamborghinis, they're going to be seeing a lot of Lamborghinis on TikTok. So what we see on our devices isn't what everybody else sees, but it's easy to forget because we are seeing everything within that confined space that there are algorithms at play, there are different preferences at play, there are different followings at play, there are different time zones and different restrictions on certain music in different countries and all these things going on, which means that it's sometimes easy to forget that actually we have a curated concentration of people which might create the perception that there are not people out with that box that therefore need to be myth busted too have their myths busted yeah could, could i just quickly add on that one um of the famous well not famous the, the work of daniel kahneman isn't it but where he talked about all you see is all there is so most people will make these huge conclusions i guess in a similar way to my original question around thinking that what i see is all there is and really we're only fed even even if we're not fed by an algorithm if you take away social media you, you're still subject to that um so and it's probably one of the reasons why i did want to ask this question to you two because you know i took a step back i'm seeing a load of things i'm coming up with these conclusions i need to ask people is that kind of is that kind of true you know be, be honest and get different opinions and because all i see is not all there is and i need to ex I need to expand that. I, I, I certainly don't understand the uh, social media algorithm, so it's a, it's a nice uh, discussion topic. Well, so you've got you, you, yes, you, you're in uh, your own social media bias, and, and it always will be, unless you actively. Uh, and I think I think for you do this too. I know that I deliberately click on and follow uh, uh, people who I've stumbled across and, and completely do not believe what they're saying. So I might look on and, and you know, because I, what I want to do is sit outside the echo chamber and find out what, you know, what, what the opposing thought process is. And I suppose that's, Phil, I'm sure you probably do the same from a scientific perspective. You need to understand each different argument in order to, to, to at least understand whether yours is still, you know, valid. So what you've got then, going back to what you've described earlier on, uh, Fergus, is, is your different um, ideas. What do you think? You like to think of Phil Heath in the shower. Uh, that, that's clear to us all now. But what you've got is uh, that that's that's all we heard. <laughs> but what you've got is uh, is, is people that will follow you, follow uh, Ronnie Coleman, for instance, um, are not likely to also be following if they're into bodybuilding as opposed to into sport. They're also not likely to be following um, uh, Paul Radcliffe at the same time. And if they want to do what, if their aspirational model is Phil Heath or, or Ronnie Coleman or, or, or anybody of that ilk, if somebody says to them, do you want to do the things Paula Radcliffe is doing? They're going to say, no, because that's going to make me look more like her. I'm going to swing that way more than I would swing this way. I need to lean into what the bodybuilders are doing. And I guess the hybrid approach is saying, you know, just because this person's doing this, oh, look at Ronnie Coleman. How much bloody cardio does he do? Did he do? A huge amount of cardio. The guy fucking lived on a treadmill half the time. People don't quite see that because they see what is marketed, which is lifting these heavy mates, but you know, cake weight, all this kind of stuff. It's um, it's all marketing, isn't it? So you have to dig a little bit deeper, uh, and and that's kind of where we, that, that's our job essentially, is to sit and, and show people uh, that that you know, as an example, Fergus Crawley can be strong beyond normal uh, terms and can also run an ultramarathon, or he can do this plus at the same time doing that. That's our job. That, that's myth busting in of itself is, is to present the ability. But also um, to caveat and underline that in doing so, I will never be winning powerlifting competitions. I will never yeah, be winning absolutely. triathlons and that there is an element of sacrifice and nobody should be under the illusion that you can excel at both to yeah. the same level were you to be doing those individually. Absolutely, which I guess throws us back to the last uh, episode where we discussed the definitions, etc. But what we've got then now are, are uh, our definitions, uh, which we discussed before, and, and our approach and, and our, uh, 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 I guess, our 
quest seems a bit over the top, but our push anyway to, to try and allow people to enjoy all these different facets of fitness. And, and as we've said before, to, to move forward and maybe more than one at once and, and, and not have to put one down for the other, et cetera, et cetera. But then we end up with the uh, uh, a, a kind of a scenario where what our message is then gets muddied a little bit when, when the word we are using to describe our message then becomes a catch-all for all kinds of different things, which I guess is what the question is today. What is hybrid then? If we're saying hybrid training is is possible, and we're saying that uh, no, no, this is hybrid training, not that, not the rest of it, then you get then you get lost in the world of social media because it now has become a catch-all for generalism as opposed to a definition in of itself that kind of that, that we we want it to be. Or that's not fair because we don't need it to be anything in particular but what we've ended up with is, is a slight bastardization of, of a term which ultimately what was was just a throwaway term anyway to describe something that didn't have a term I, it, it's funny because there has been a bit of a bastardization of the term within our definition so i think it's important to flag the bias but maybe it's because people are frustrated with the definitions they're seeing therefore feeling well i fall into that category therefore this is my definition and I don't know how I would caveat that, but I, I do just feel like it's it's somewhat becoming just attached to anything and everything, which, again, we are not the gatekeepers to it. We have no right over the term, so that's that's fine. I think it's just a case of, of people understanding what the term actually means when it's being put in front of them and how they might be able to interact with it. So I I definitely think that functional fitness and hybrid athletes have the, the the lines have become blurred but i do think it's the execution of single disciplines to a committed level that is kind of the, the the sort of nuance between just doing things alongside the other things um because yeah like cycling is a hobby in a group ride every sunday morning alongside being a bodybuilder does it make you a hybrid athlete i don't know if you want it to, then yeah, great, fine. But I just think it's it's kind of something on social media that's being leveraged to try and try and place people into certain categories where there is no need to do so. Perhaps I don't know. It's kind of a I, I'm seeing a lot more of it, and that there's been a few things where I've kind of rolled my eyes, and that's obviously from an inherent bias. And I can't think of what those examples were, and I want to flag those to take accountability for the fact that. As a non gatekeeper of the phrase, I've found myself rolling my eyes, which is bad behavior for me. So, why is that the case? And I think that's because we're very proud of the value that comes from the training and the commitment of multiple disciplines. And we take a lot of pride in helping people go on that journey themselves. So, if the concept of quote unquote the hybrid athlete allows people to come to us to then go on that journey themselves. We kind of want that term to remain comprehensible to all rather than muddy, if that makes sense. So essentially, it, it's it's a phrase that means something to people that know how to understand it. But if that understanding becomes broader and broader and broader, then it might become more difficult for people to explore what it actually means to competently train concurrently. And we like to think that we help provide a solution for people to do that. But it's like, I don't know, if there were if there were 15 different federations for CrossFit, then the association of, oh, that's CrossFit, wouldn't be front of mind for people. So I think the ownership of the conventional disciplines that the phrase the hybrid athlete has hybrid training has is becoming broader and we have no right to complain about that um but i think because it is probably predominantly a marketing term i think it is being leveraged for marketing reasons and therefore maybe muddying the waters of what those that would like to become quote unquote hybrid athletes perceive that to be that was convoluted so it just goes to show it's kind of something I'm still making my mind up about, but I, I think it's just a case of, I don't know, I, I, I'm, I'm, I just don't want to be a hypocrite here because we obviously use the phrase for marketing reasons and, yeah. Well, it's not just for marketing reasons, though, is it? There is a specification or a specificity to a degree yeah, yeah, yeah. of what, what it is that we are, are suggesting can be done and has been done and we can help you do. And therefore, we have adopted um, the the idea of, of, of 
a hybrid athlete. And we have adopted the idea of hybrid performance and hybrid, you know, uh, training based on the parameters that we we ascribe to that. So we are saying, again, to, to, to go back to that kind of previous definition episode, we're saying that the the ability to... So let me try and re reframe that. Okay, if, if, if we look at functional fitness, what we've got are... And other and other big names, we won't name them because it'd be unfair to do so, I think. But if we've got functional fitness, I can think of examples of functional fitness and I can think of examples of people saying that they are hybrid athletes, okay? And what they're saying is, I'm going to do a marathon. Uh, and so everything that they've done up to that point that might be strength-based or might be power-based is then dropped almost in order for them to pursue three to six months of marathon training. Uh, and or they'll just do a little bit of running and say, I'm going to do bodybuilding now and now my body. So within the course of a year, they've done strength training, bodybuilding, marathon training, and, and something else, perhaps. Well, in my opinion, that's not hybrid training. That's four distinct phases of specialization. Uh, and what they maybe have managed to do is, at the very least, maintain other work. Or they're doing, you know, they're, they're maybe not doing any strength work at all uh, in, in uh, lower body in order to facilitate the marathon training, which is kind of very opposite essentially to what we are saying. Um, or there you've got functional fitness uh, uh, characters who are overall doing the, the generalist thing, which is what functional fitness is. Uh, and and I, I love that um, area of fitness. And I, 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 like, uh, I like what I'm looking at, but then they might decide that they're going to run uh, the London Marathon or something. So everything is geared up to the 16, maybe 12 weeks leading up to the London Marathon where it's all run based. Um, which isn't quote-unquote hybrid training. That's now specialist training for one particular outcome. Um, and then that kind of bastardizes what I see as being uh, what hybrid training is, which is the ability to say, okay, I'm doing all this generalist work. I still want to progress in my strength training and I want to do this uh, the London Marathon. Can I do both at the same time? Which is what people come to us and ask. I want to run a marathon. I've always wanted to do an Ironman. Um, but I don't want to give up the strength work. I love working in the gym. I love lifting. I love, you know, powerlifting, etc. So I'd love to be able to do an Ironman. But I know that if I do, I'm going to have to give up powerlifting. Um, and I, I'm not prepared to do that. That's where we step in and say, well, here's what we conceive to be hybrid training, whereby you can do both. Um, and I think that other people um, are using hybrid training just to say they have done a few extra things. And I'm not just a bodybuilder. I can do X, Y, Z each. But I've actually developed into four distinct specialist phases over the course of a year and therefore it's not hybrid training at all it's just phased training uh, and that's where I see that that's where I get frustrated and then probably like yourself then I have to turn the camera around on myself and go why does it fucking matter Johnny why are you gonna you don't know the phrase hybrid we know who coined it we know Alex came up with it and I know very well Alex will say himself that it was a last minute thing he coined the phrase the hybrid athlete he wrote the book the hybrid athlete uh, but it didn't have a title. The very last minute, the publishers said, oh, shit, what do you want to call this? And you're like, oh, I don't know, a hybrid athlete. And that was it. All of a sudden, it's a thing that we've got now. So Contrary to what other people have said online recently or tried to claim ownership of it. Well, yeah. I mean, there's the other thing, you know, uh, people who are essentially imposters in that uh, uh, situation saying that they, they have created, lauded, and pioneered hybrid ath uh, athletes. And you think, well, no, you haven't, mate. You've just... You've just jumped on top of a, a of another person's work uh, and and kind of stolen stolen the show there a little bit because of the marketing capability yeah. that, 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 which is absolutely it's, it's absolutely fine to do so but it's yeah the, the, it is unequivocally undeniable that Alex coined and was the first proponent first mover of it so and the pioneer what of, it was it was able to yeah, say this is yeah. what that is and, and obviously as we know I, I worked with Alex for a long time uh, and, and still work closely with them. And we still have the same understanding of what hybrid is. And therefore, when you look online, you see every Tom, Dick and Harry saying, we, we're, I'm a hybrid athlete, I'm a hybrid coach, I'm a hybrid this, I'm a hybrid that. You're like, well, what does it even mean, mate? And they probably don't have an answer. They just like the fact that it now sounds cool, which, ironically, is probably Alex and mine and your fault. <laughs> Because well, no, to some to some degree, but to, to, to some degree, but again, we're in the same category. It's important that we we highlight that again. We we, we can we can we're not complaining in any way, but it's, no, it's what, over. What I'm saying it. is that the, the more yeah. it becomes something that that we popularize, the more that we are saying hybrid is something you can do. Hybrid is this, hybrid is that. The more the more socially uh, more, sorry social media acceptability it has, the more traction it gains. The more people therefore. I mean, to be fair, the, 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 the hybrid case, performance method. 
Steffi well, we Cohen, could, which is yeah. powerlifting and bodybuilding, which doesn't yeah. fit with our parameters exactly. or definition exactly. of. But exactly. yeah, yeah. But then it's you chaos out there. Back, you kind of think, well, which way do you want to play this? Do you want there to be more opportunity to popularize? That's a different word to say. Popularize our concept. Popularize hybrid athletics as we see it. Uh, if we do, we're going to have to take some of the some of the rough with the smooth. I think, uh, in which case, you have to let it slide because we can't we can't curate and monitor the internet. I think the phrase serves really well as a way of managing expectations. Whereas, if it is continually diluted to being to to being, I do different things recreationally. Yeah. Then people's expectations might become more difficult to manage. And I think essentially the phrase, the hybrid athlete was bought out, born out of a need to provide parameters for people to manage their expectations within, in terms of what they're actually capable of developing concurrently. Whereas now it's kind of gone to the other end of the spectrum, which is I play golf three times a year. I can do a kickflip and I swim three times a week and go on a long ride on a Sunday. Therefore I'm hybrid AF. Which again is fine. I, I'm not. I'm not saying that that person is is in any way spending their life poorly, or I would have it any other way, or that I am in any way insulting their character, but more that within the conventional understanding of the term brackets, I believe, I think that might, in the long run, dilute the parameters in which the phrase can give context to, to therefore present people with a access point to assess whether it's something they would like to get involved in or not comprende johnny you you were unmuted that whole time then muted yourself before you started talking that was great i, enjo I enjoyed watching that unfold <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I was agreeing I, I think i think what you're saying makes perfect sense in, in actual fact what we don't want is that the the waters are muddied so and this is not from a commercial perspective that i say this this is we don't want the muddies to be watered enough by all these different interpretations of the use of something that we singularly believe speaks to a certain outcome so we don't want people to say like steffi cohen etc and, and what they're doing is great within their particular uh, genre but we don't want people who think i'd like to run a marathon whilst i'm doing my strength training then not know where to go and not know how to actually manage it you know because if they just jump into anything that says hybrid then they might be getting something that is not in the least bit hybrid and then their goals are not met and, and so that's why for this for the purpose of labeling and definitions and all the rest which isn't always useful uh, there becomes an opportunity to say okay well if i'm a powerlifting coach you come to me for powerlifting if i'm a running coach you come to me for running if i'm a hybrid coach you come to me so you can actually do those kind of things uh, at the same time and, and progress the way that we've described if i'm a generalist coach who likes to tinker with this that, and the next thing every now and again in phases then this is what we do and this is how we do it. we can call it functional fitness web um calling it hybrid and then not actually having it be hybrid just confuses the marketplace and probably the people who want to get the most out of it does that all make sense phil i i, and I feel like we're maybe being a bit too gatekeepy here where we have no right to be but no, I, I I don't think you're being gatekeepy at all. I think that Omnia and has a very nice, clear vision of what it can do. Ultimately, you know, you have your ideas of what hybrid training is, and you present on social media what you do from a coaching perspective and from an, being an athlete perspective. And it's never arrogant. It's never, oh, this is what we do. Everyone else is doing it wrong. It's just, this is what we do. These are these reasons. And please, we're a community. Come and join us on this journey, which I think is very approachable and is a strategy that a lot of people don't do because they're trying to be gatekeeper. They're trying to like, this is wrong. This is wrong. I guess that's why I mentioned the whole myth busting thing because people want to prove myth things or myths bust because it then gives them some kind of gatekeeping role to let people think oh well i'm not going to go that way i'm going to go this way whereas yours is much more much more approachable you've even you know never been arrogant or anything like that on social media which is really quite refreshing <laughs> and it's um, um one of the reasons why i started following you and and then we got you know working together which is which has been absolutely great and uh I guess that's where my questions stem from because I, I see certain things happening in the hybrid space. I see Omnia doing their thing and I like the way Omnia do things. 
Um, and it's always good to get your opinion as to what you see in the whole uh, social media sphere. That's very nice to hear. Thank you, Phil. I think I think upon reflection, having had this conversation, going into it without much thought beforehand, um, other than fleeting thought whenever I've been scrolling social media myself and Johnny, we've had a few conversations along the way, is uh, we've had over 2,500 athletes come through the business, about 1,400 athletes currently active. So we've got a good perspective on as good a perspective as anyone on the planet, actually, as a business um, in the space, on the range of people that are within the conventional understanding of the term in the space. And the thread of DNA that runs through all of that is people looking for self-improvement in things that they enjoy. And I think that is the most important thing to consider in reality. And all of, any, any sort of gatekeeping or def, definitions are irrelevant if that is the thread of DNA that runs through people's decision-making in this process. But also encouraging people to have faith that they can explore new and exciting things whilst also holding on to the things that they currently enjoy from an ability and an execution point of view. And that is, I think, where the hybrid element comes in. And I think it kind of importantly comes back to maybe the definition that we discussed when we were actually trying to define the term which is where you are training concurrently across disparate disciplines. So if you are training components that do not necessarily support one another, that is where things become more hybrid. Whereas a skill-based sport like golf doesn't really interfere with a person's, other than maybe maladaptive mobility and things, but essentially your golf shouldn't in theory be massively affected by heavy bench pressing. Therefore, those two do not necessarily marry up in a hybrid sense within the realms of the definition that we're operating to based on the previous conversation, which people should go and listen to if they haven't yet done so. But swimming in the open water and bench pressing are at opposing ends of the spectrum and use a lot of the same biomechanical areas. So that's where it becomes more hybrid because you're you're having to balance something rather than just doing other things. And I think balance is the key word, really. I feel like I've kind of, I feel like I've kind of come to a revelation in my own head there, um, which makes makes this more 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 comprehensible for me at this point. Well, the, I'm nodding away at you there, uh, and, and you know, hovering over that unmute, despite the fan in the background. But the the balance is, is the key, isn't it? It's, it's that ability to manage those things. And I think if we if we're the more terms. We don't have any right to gatekeep that. It doesn't really matter in that sense, and we don't want to. But the more terms become bastardized, the more confusing it becomes for people that want to enter into that opportunity to balance. And, and like you say, they don't want to have to necessarily give up one thing in order to achieve another. Uh, and and then you have, you know, people who are claiming to be hybrid. Uh, and again, it's, I suppose this is sharpening my sword again somewhat. But people that are claiming to be hybrid. Uh, having done strength work and then taking on a phase of marathon training and removing all their lower body strength work in order to make sure that they can do that marathon training is actually the opposite of what people want to achieve from a hybrid perspective. They want to be able to do a marathon and maintain the lower body strength training or the, or the full body strength training perhaps that they had enjoyed in the first place. So if the message then from somebody claiming to be hybrid is, well, we can still make it fun, mate, but ultimately you're gonna to have to give up squatting in order to do a marathon. And that's what my frustration is when I see, see people online saying, I'm hybrid this, I'm hybrid that. It's like, well, actually what you're doing is not hybrid at all. Uh, and you, you, you've, you've therefore, by adopting that term, you've closed the door on somebody having that opportunity for balance. And that to me is frustrating. It's, that's not about a gatekeeping thing. That's just about a, a you know, a, a, a shutting off opportunity thing. And, and uh, it is frustrating. But I don't own it. I just, I'm fucking good at it. Oh, there's the arrogance, Phil. Christ. <laughs> Everyone has to have some. Like it's, uh, they, they can throw it out when they can at the right time. It I think that was probably the, probably the right time. Whatever episode yeah. of the podcast is, if it's taking you this long, Johnny, I think that was well delivered. Um, People have not sort of tapped into my arrogance at this point. They've all been listening to it. Yeah, it's, it's unbearable, to be honest, on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> I feel sick to my core having to share it with you all now. But it's suffering in silence, at least you all now understand. But no, I think, I, I, I think, I think I'm, I, I'm done on the topic. I, I think essentially it's a case of we can't control the narrative. 
We obviously have a place within the narrative. We have thousands of people that fall under our remit within the narrative, which gives us a good top-down view on what people's general perspective on what things mean is. And I think we've covered collectively all of the key points with that in mind today. But at the end of the day, it's not a definition that we own. It's not a definition that we pretend we own. We can't gatekeep it. Um, We are not the only people in the space. And everybody can do whatever they want to do. And that's great. And something we encourage. But just to maybe be a little bit more deliberated in what you consume online around the phrasing. Again, that sounds a bit high and mighty, but I don't intend it to. Uh, But from our perspective, having had so many people come through the door, so many conversations there seems to be a clear understanding of what the phrase hybrid training means in day-to-day people that want to train and get better. And that is balancing of two disciplines that they've had. The person at their triathlon club say, you can't lift as well. And the person at their powerlifting club say, you can't train for a triathlon. Oh, you want to get big swole pecs and do a marathon? (laughs) Nah, bro, that can't happen. It's the... Essentially... I believe that the vast majority of people that enter the trade... No, I'm going to... Oh, oh I've minced my words. <clears throat> I'm going to try that again, everybody. Sorry, sorry. I'm not going to edit that out. Everybody can listen to me squirm. I believe that the vast majority of people that enter into the sphere of hybrid training do so as a way of proving to themselves that they can effectively balance disparate training mechanisms because people have told them that they can't and whether they've been through a training process and found that they've missed doing something, or whether they've been trying to balance two different disciplines, two disparate disciplines for a while, and then want to do it better. Those are the vast majority of reasons why people come to us. And in fact, that makes everybody sound like they just want to prove people wrong, which is a very sort of cliched online fitnessy marketing term, but isn't that a bit of fun? And I think that is my overarching takeaway from today's conversation. And I'm glad that it's taken me 38 minutes and 22 seconds to come to some sort of conclusion because I started off as a bit of a train wreck. So over to you, gentlemen. Yeah. No, thank you for that. Uh, you know, there are questions that I've been wanting to get your opinion on ever since that we were messaging not too long ago regarding um, how people convey certain messages online. And I know that any topic on social media, I'm sure, is a bit of a minefield and actually just providing information which you believe to be true and represents you well whatever it might be I think is really quite important and I think Omnia are a group that really do that and that's one of the reasons why Omnia have got very popular um, and it's it, yeah the confusion creates the gatekeeping I think and it creates the people trying to like put others down to try and lead them towards um, towards themselves and uh, I think that's a very short-term strategy and it's a very dishonest strategy, and it's not one that uh, you guys have used. And it's over the over the years has allowed Omnia to really shine through. And that's not me kissing your ass. <laughs> that's me just being um, genuinely honest and giving an overview of what I think social media or the state of social media is at the moment. So, um, cheers, boys. Thank you, Johnny. Closing statements. Uh, well, I've been arrogant enough so far, so I think I'm just going to uh, underline both what you fellows have said really is that, that we, we don't want to be gatekeeping but we do want to encourage people to just uh, go back to the echo chamber scenarios just think that a little bit harder about what you're consuming and whether or not it is uh, accurate or not if you if you have a look around the edges and the peripherals and, and make sure that you're, you're, you're looking across the um the spectrum of, of of learning have a look uh, and then have a look again and have a look deeper and then find out whether you're biased or not keep going uh, and you might find that the social media world opens up that little bit more for you so uh, and also, if you want to do hybrid training, if you come to us, we're better at it. Yeah, cheers, thanks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so don't take everything at face value. Yeah. And then no, once you don't. get better at that, assuming a lot of different things, not take every, question everything, and then the good stuff will start to sift through over time. And as we like to say on this podcast, <clears throat> it depends. So with that in <laughs> mind, I just want to really underline from all three of us how much we appreciate everybody's engagement with these podcasts with the space of quote-unquote hybrid training and how proud we are to have so many people flying the flag for what we believe to be the conventional understanding of the term but the beauty of that is that there's so much variety and diversity within that those parameters so 
thank you for those listening thank you to everybody within our ecosystem it's really really exciting for us that we're continuing to grow and have more people join the join the folds as it were and if you do have any thoughts on this topic or anything we've discussed in previous podcasts please do reach out please do comment on the youtube videos that go up live with them um send us a dm send us an email individually on omni or whatever it might be because your input is fantastic this is just three blokes talking about things that we've seen that are interesting to talk about and you listening so we'd love to have your input and if you would like to provide more focused input and have a bit more of a deep dive and understanding on some of the the nuances of what we talk about then do use the code down below for 25 percent off omnia performance premium where phil shares lectures every month along with supportive literature and there is a chat room to ask questions on more scientific basis as well as a monthly q a that we do in there on the more scientific side of things and we will very soon be getting guest speakers in there monthly on different topics of expertise to bring things to life a little bit more so thank you very much for listening five stars review have we earned it yeah cheers thank you very much you've just done that for us haven't you nice one thank you and what do you say johnny I just agreed with you. Sure, a five star review. If there's more stars, you can that's find. A, that's that's that. That's that. That's that underlying arrogance coming through. I mentioned five stars, and you immediately feel the need to go. Yes, please validate me. But... <laughs> <laughs> five stars is not enough. This is and a five, if anyone watches, I'm always sunny in Philadelphia. They'll know Dennis slamming his. Fi- oh, I'm a five star man. Sorry, headphone users, you are now deaf. Um, so that's a nice way to finish podcast.